Here's one. Feels like a decent one. Oh, here he comes. <laughs> I need to tighten my drag. <laughs> Ooh, hey guys, stop shaking. This is Gene Jensen. Today we're gonna to talk about fishing a football jig. All right, so fishing a football jig. What are some of the things that you need? First of all, you need a football jig. Isn't that right? That's right. Football jig. <laughs> but uh, what a football jig is, it's basically a jig that's got the head shape of a football. This is a gridiron jig, jig from Seabird Outdoors. It's one of the ones I designed. Um, it's part of their Fluke Master series. But uh, it's, a, uh, it's a three quarter ounce. I like three quarter, I like half ounce jigs. Uh, 20 pound test fluorocarbon, seven foot three medium heavy rod. And the reason I don't use a heavy rod with a jig, with a football jig is because I like to have a light wire hook or, and, uh, and I also don't want to blow their, their mouth open. So I want to be able to have a little bit of give in that, in that rod. Uh, eight one to one gear ratio reel. And, uh, and that's, that's the equipment. That's all it is. The trailers I use, I like to keep them compact myself. This is a Rage Bug on here. Uh, Rage Chunk, Rage Craw is a little too big for me for a football jig. Um, and then as for colors, I don't really care about matching a color. I mean, um, I like to mix match them. If I was a, a black and blue jig, I'd probably throw a green pumpkin trailer on here. Just me. I don't know. Never had a problem catching a fish on them. One of the things I do with a jig when I first get it is I, I look at the, the uh, the weed guard sometimes the weed guard is too long and when i say too long for me i don't want it much past the barb when i push it down like this this one's almost too long but it's it's bearable if it's any longer than that i cl i cut it off all right so let's talk about um making this thing a little bit more weedless a little a little bit more snagless one of the things ryan taught me was is he actually taught me how to fan this a totally different way see when you're dragging the a football jig it rocks and so as it rocks along you want to have as as much protection on both sides of the hook as you possibly can so what you do is you take your finger and you try to find the center of that weed guard and what i do is i normally separate them a little bit and try to get everything to come around your finger and then push down towards the center of that weed guard pretty hard and what that does is it gives you a nice little fan just like that and it gives you that protection that you need and it prevents you from yanking and pulling these things out the way i used to do it is i would pull them off to the side and pull them really hard and try to bend them and a lot of times i would end up pulling my weed guard out uh, and having to get a new jig so that's the uh that's the way that we, uh, that we protect the hook a little bit better, makes it a whole lot more weedless. All right, so let's talk about some of the places you would fish a, a football jig. First of all, to me, a football jig is a hard bottom jig. You're dragging it. You're not, you're not doing much hopping. You're not doing much flipping into heavy cover because it's not a heavy cover jig. Um, and so you're, you're fishing it on steep points, uh, hard top points. You're fishing it in rock, but not too much rock. If you get into that rock, that's what, Ryan, dang, uh, uh, that chunk rock that you see on. I'd say anything like basketball, you know, not basketball, like baseball, softball kind of size. And, and bigger and really, really yeah, together. Like that riprap you see along da dams and along bridges. Every time. Every time you'll get that thing hung up. So it's not good for that kind of rock. But you get a good rocky point or a shell bed like here on Tennessee River. Um, it, it's, it's ideal. Heat gravel. Yeah, pea gravel, anything small, just, but it's it's meant to mimic a, a, a crayfish, crawfish, crayfish, whatever you want to call it, mud bug. It works good on these rocky ledges too. Yep. Because yep. there's really no gaps for it to get. That's right, and when it falls, it kind of wiggles down too, so it's really good to bring off of these steep, steep ledges. But the, the biggest thing is you're trying to mimic a crawfish. You're not trying to make a, mimic a bluegill or swimming bait, or, you know, a, a, some type of a fish. This is something that you fish on or close to the bottom. So let's talk about some of the different type of retrieves that you can have with a football jig. So there's three different types of retrieves that you can fish with a football jig. That's it, just three. The first one is, is the drag. And this is what I do about 90% of the time. Cast it out, let it sink to the bottom, and you want to stay in contact with the bottom. So I'm going to drag it like a Carolina rig. Okay, so I'm going to point towards it, and I'm going to drag to the side. And I'm going to feel for any little bite. 
or even if it comes up, if I, if I pull it and I'm dragging and I hit a rock, I'm going to stop. I'm going to bring my rod tip up a little bit and I'm going to shake it. And what that does is it stops on that rock and it just makes that jig do this number and, and oh, the dead crawl yeah the dead crawl <laughs> and just crawl it and just just shake it and make, well i call it waving at a fish is what you're doing <laughs> there'll be a fish sitting on that rock looking down on it, and you're just sitting here waving at it and he's going to grab it the other one is a hop and it's not like i said you're fishing this close on or close to the bottom so you let it fall down to the bottom and you literally move run i'm gonna have to back up just a little bit for this so they can see the rod tip and so you're dragging it along and it's literally you're just hopping just a few little inches inch pop with your rod and you drag a little bit and then you hop and then you drag and then you hop and that's it okay number three is one that you do only in a special situation and it's called stroking you get yourself a half ounce three quarter ounce one ounce jig you're out on the on um drops or on um ledges especially here on the Tennessee River, and you're going to throw it out and you're going to let it sink on all the way down on top of that ledge and then it goes from like, say, 12 feet to 20 feet. And you're going to throw way up into that shallow water and you're going to go pop and you're going to let it fall on a slack line. You're watching that slack line for a jump and you go pop and it's you're ripping it up off the bottom and letting it fall back down on a slack line and that really uh, gets those reaction strikes from those fish that are sitting right on the lip of that ledge and uh, Hold on tight because it they, you get some big ones doing that, but that's number three I wouldn't I wouldn't even consider doing anything else. It's not a swim jig. It's not a, a heavy cover jig It is a bottom dragging jig and that's a lot of times. That's where you're gonna catch that catch the bass now when not to throw it Don't throw it in a in a little farm pond that has nothing but mud and silt on the bottom of it make sure that it's a hard bottom clay rock hard bottom and the way you find hard bottom is is usually you'll find hard bottom right on right at the top of a drop because all the silt has fallen off of it um, a steep point because the silt can't settle on it uh, bluff walls rock piles anything like that or rocky points uh, are, are the what, what I'd be fishing with but if it's a soft bottom forget about it because you're in the mud and the fish aren't going to come down and get it all right so what Ryan's going to do is he's going to tell us a little bit about how uh, how water temperature affects how you work the baits so Gene was just explaining three really good retrieves with the football jig and uh, really I mean two, two the the drag and the hop are what we use 95 percent of the time um, if you're lucky enough to live on a lake that has ledges and shell beds, you know, that's when stroking the jig can be great. Uh, but one thing that's really important, and this is, this is honestly, I mean, this kind of goes across the board with, with a lot of the baits that you throw, is, uh, is water temperature is very critical with the speed of your retrieve and what kind of retrieve you use and how to kind of vary your retrieve. The colder the water, the more dragging that you want to do. And you want to drag the bait slower. You want to move it, you know, less... You want to pull the bait less with each pull you know move it a half a foot at a time or you know three to four inches at a time as the water warms up and it's you know getting into the mid 40s low 50s you can start dragging it longer drags you know pulling it you know with maybe two three feet at a time then when you start to employ hopping um, you know you want just short little small hops and as the water continues to warm you can start hopping it more aggressively and it's kind of just a, a way to, to fish the jig faster and more efficiently in the areas that you're covering so you know we were at Jordan Lake last week and the water was 64 65 and it had probably warmed up maybe seven or eight degrees in the three days that we were there and by the third day I was able to have my jig out and I was able to have that jig and I was hopping it pop 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 I mean you know moving the jig fast so we were able to cover water quickly so so match your retrieve to the water temperature I mean obviously there's going to be certain scenarios where bass are going to want a slower than normal retrieve faster than normal retrieve but for the most part you can match the water temperature and the weather trends to how you're going to work that jig to be able to work it more efficiently and be able to cover water better um, in situations where you're able to use a fast retrieve and don't have to sit there and and soak it for a while so that's, yep. that's pretty important you know I, I feel it's a it's a pretty big deal when when you're fishing your jig and uh and it's it's a way to to you know fish it more efficiently exactly that's a good rule of thumb 
And, and like you said, you can you could use that across the board with how fast you work any bait according to what the water temperature is, especially this time of the year coming, coming from winter into pre-spawn and into spawn. And uh, one of my favorite ways to do it is just to drag it. Uh, and, and, and shake. The opposite <laughs> actually happens if you get a, if you're, you know, you're talking about the spawn and, and the pre spawn, you know, if you got a big cold front that blows through, you may have been, you may have been hopping it and they have been biting it and then you're out there the next day and you can't get a bite hopping it. You got to start dragging it again. So, you know, the rule kind of works both ways. So let's go over the hook set. To me, with football jigs, there's only one direction to set the hook and that's directly over your head. So when you feel the bite, you stop, you make sure the fish is on there, you reel down twice and you pop it right over top of your head or over your right or left shoulder, depending on what you, you know, you're, whether you're left-handed or right-handed. There are two different types of overhead hook sets. If I'm fishing a really heavy half ounce, three quarter ounce, one ounce football jig that's just got a big old monster head on it, I'm gonna do what's called a reel set. I'm gonna feel that bite. I'm gonna lift up until my rod begins to bend over and then I'm gonna pull back really hard. So it looks something like this without the, the jacked up flex. Are you in the tree, Ryan? Ryan, did you get in the tree? I did, fishing for squirrels. Oh, he oh just got wet, well, there you go. <laughs> oh, we're gonna have to get in some floaties. Um, okay, so back to the hook set. <laughs> back to the hook set. Okay, and I'm gonna try to do this. Uh, a real set, like I said, is, is kind of one of those things that it, it just takes practice. You, you, you lift up your rod till you feel the bend, and I usually will, will pull it up to about right there, and then I'll pull back just like this. And the reason you want to do that is because the jig is so heavy that yep. you want to get that stretch out of your line, yep. or you want to let the line load up and then snap it back. Yep, yep, and you want, and when the that big old piece of lead is inside the fish's mouth you want it to bump up against the front side of that fish's mouth with uh, without blowing it open so you pull it tight pull it tight pull it tight and then when you pull it tight like this it just barely pops the fish's mouth open and nine times out of ten you're gonna get the hook in him okay hook choice is critical I do not do not use a jig without a mustad hook um, I I just I'm so I got so tired of having hook points roll on me. I started to use ultra point jig hooks and I haven't had that problem anymore. And so and those jig hooks will last me a lot of fish. I don't even I, they don't rust easy. Either. They don't rust easy either. But but anyway, like when we were in Kingfisher, I had one jig. I bet I caught over 500 fish on that one jig head because I never had that tip roll. But anyway, that's beside the point. Just be sure you set the hook and set it over top of your head, and you'll catch that fish right up in the roof of the mouth. Perfect hook set. All right, so we covered the real set. The other one is just the jerk set. You know, kind of like Ryan being a jerk, but a jerk set. Um, <laughs> and it's literally, you feel the bite, you take two, three turns down and you pop it straight back over. And you know, and you see some people, oh my goodness, I'll do it sometimes. When you just know that it's a big fish, you get that big old thump on them. I mean, I'll just sit there and I'll go, as soon as I get myself out of the tree, look Ryan, I'm in the tree. I let it drop down and I, I'll actually bend my knees and put my weight into it and I'll just go, and I'll come up on my tippy toes. Like I said, you run the risk of blowing the fish's mouth open, so I don't do that a whole lot, but it sure is fun. It looks good on video. Oh, yeah. Freaking, is it a good one? Oh, she got wrapped up. Come on out of there. So I knocked, I dropped the hook, the lure retriever down to try to knock the jig loose just to save the jig. We figured the fish had gotten off and nope, look where Ryan's got on the other end of his line. We knocked the hook loose and the jig is still, <laughs> the fish was still on the fit on the jig. So guys, when we were talking about a couple videos ago, paying attention to details, this fish, you know, there's a few signs on this fish. Um, you know, we're trying to figure out, you know, how deep into the pre-spawn they are. Um, you can start, I don't know if you can really see it on the camera, but you're starting to see a little bit of wear and tear yeah, on the tail. a little bit there. of red, yep. And there's also... Mud. See the mud in the slime? And that means they're on the bottom. So pay attention. Yep. Every fish is a clue. And that's why we caught them on a jig. All right, so this is almost a perfect scenario. What we got here is I'm sitting in a creek channel, a little creek, creek bend, and a point that comes out, let me show you guys, this point comes out right here and it's kind of a flat point, 
but then it drops off a little bit steep. You see the bank, it's nice and chunk rock, uh, a little bit smaller than baseball size, something that you really don't want to fish it slow, but I'm definitely going to drag through it. It's just one of those places that's just got to have a fish. All I'm doing right now is I'm just dragging it through those rocks and oh it feels so good. It feels like you're bringing it across a washboard and I, and I pull up and I feel a little bit more resistance than normal and I'll just sit there and I'll shake it just like that and just shake it a few times and then just keep dragging it. Now if you ever get it hung on a rock first thing you want to do is you just kind of want to drop to a slack line and just pop it just a little bit. It'll pop it over top of that rock. That feels like one right there. Oh, come on now. Oh gosh, it's a good one. <laughs> Football jigs, baby. You want to get her? You want me to? I get her. Whoa, look at that fish. Come on, sissy. Beautiful color. God, pre spawn female. Football jigs. I'm telling you. Yeah, little spots on her fins. That's pretty cool. You can throw these things, but be careful, they catch biggins. Awesome. Well, I hope you guys learned something from this video. Man, I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. I love dragging a jig. There's nothing like a jig bite. Be sure to check out my other channel. Be sure to subscribe to this one. But like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out of the water, go and catch a fish. Have a great day. <laughs> awesome.